Hey everybody, so this right here is the all new 2019 Ford Ranger. Now I say all new because Ford decided to bring the worldwide version of the truck to North America for 2019. So this thing isn't exactly new, although it is new to us, and it's coming into what is already a crowded and competitive midsize market. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Ranger. We'll walk around it, see all of its neat features and quirks, and then we're gonna take it for a drive. And of course, we are gonna hit some light off-road trails, but most importantly, some really snowy trails. So make sure you stay tuned. this one off just walking around and talking about the Ranger. First of all, the styling, I think it looks really, really nice. I think that it has sort of a tough butch look for a little mid-sizer. And the fact that this XLT mid-trim model gets the chrome around the grill and the chrome front bumper, you know what? It looks nice, looks premium. I dig it. What do you guys think? So our truck here does come with the FX4 off-road package. Now, what does that mean? That means that you're gonna get, along with just those stickers on the bedside, an electronic locking rear differential, these exposed front tow hooks right there. You get a front steel bash plate, they call it, that's down below the lip. You can just see it there underneath the bumper. Um, the FX4 package also brings along the off-road screen in the info cluster, specially tuned suspension. The front air dam has been removed, which is a really big deal because the plastic air dams on the front of these trucks really ruin your approach angle. So you'll see there, no air dam on this truck. You also get skid plates for the fuel tank, T-case, and the front differential. You get the terrain management system with different drive modes. And then you get the new trail control, which I will actually demo for you in a little bit. Okay, so that's what comes with FX4. So what are the numbers? Well, ground clearance on this truck with four wheel drive comes to 8.9 inches. The approach angle, 28.7 degrees. Departure, 25.4 degrees. While the breakover angle is 21.5 degrees. Now we have the Super Crew model here. Here, which means that this truck gets the larger rear seat, but it only gets a little baby five foot bed. And speaking about the bed, I wanna show you the tie downs here. So you get one at the rear end, which is pretty typical, one at the front end, which is pretty typical, but then the neat one is sort of here, sort of three quarters of the way back, you get another tie down there. Plus you get punch outs in the wall there for removable tie downs that you can add in yourself later on. Well, you can see the back seat here with my child seat in it. Not a ton of space in the rear seat of this Ranger, but just enough for me to sit there with the baby seat. And you know what, I'm actually comfortable up there. So if you got a baby seat for a Ranger, it'll just work. Now our tester here is fitted with these Hankook DynaPro tires and it is pretty cold out here about minus 10 and there definitely is lots of snow in the area. So why don't we hop into this truck take her for a ride, see what it's like on road, and then most importantly, see what it's like off road. on the road and I've had a chance to drive this Ranger for a bit so let me just share some of my first impressions and actually the very first thing that struck me was how heavy the steering is but also how quick the steering ratio is there's really not much dead zone in this truck and uh, when you're driving it that just kind of makes it feel a bit heavier than it really is so of all the mid-sizers, I would definitely say this Ranger feels the heaviest. And on paper, it's basically right in the mix with all the other trucks. This truck I'm in here, which is a short bed crew cab, weighs in at 4,441 pounds. So the steering might make the truck feel heavy, but this little four-cylinder EcoBoost definitely does not. I'm cruising along here at about 90 kilometers an hour, floor the accelerator, and boom, the 10 shift just smashes down into gear and there's a lot of really smooth power on tap in this engine. 
And while the low end is certainly impressive, taking off from, you know, a standstill, it's sort of like the third to fourth gear shift that you really feel the second wave of power. So there's no doubt that for such a small power plant, you know, there's no issue powering this Ranger. Now it definitely is a turbocharged engine. You kind of feel this initial acceleration and then right behind it comes sort of the hit of turbo. Uh, but it's not, you know, unsettling or upsetting or anything like that. There is just one issue with the powertrain that I found. I have no problem with the power, no problem with the transmission. It's the way it sounds. It really does not sound very good. This little Ranger, when it's working hard, it has this really whiny, wheezy exhaust note. And you know what? That's not to say that the V6s in the Colorado Canyon or even the Tacoma sound great. Because even a V6, you're never gonna get, you know, a throaty growl out of it like you want in a V8. But at least those engines sound a little more grown up. There's no doubt that this EcoBoost yeah, it sounds weak. Now leading up to shooting this video, I was on the Ford Canada build and price website trying to configure this truck to get some of the pricing and learn about some of the options. And I actually learned about two interesting configuration choices that Ford made. Here in Canada, you cannot get a two-wheel drive Ranger. Right now, Ford is only selling four-wheel drive Rangers, and at the moment, they don't plan to stop that. Now, you know what? I get it. You know, we experience winter. The sales split is probably predominantly four-wheel drive trucks, but I still think having a two-wheel drive base option is your best bet for value, especially if you're a fleet or something, and uh, the other manufacturers have those trucks, Ford doesn't. Maybe the, the margins are so good on the more expensive trucks that they don't care. I'm not exactly sure what the entire thinking is there. Um, but yeah, if you're in Canada, you cannot get a two-wheel drive Ranger. Now the second thing is that Canadians cannot get a Super Cab Lariat or a Super Crew XL. So basically the Super Cab model, which has the longer bed and the shorter cab, you can only get it as a basic model or an XLT, which is the mid-range model. And then with the Super Crew, when you have the big crew cab, you can't get that basic XL model. You can only get it in XLT and Lariat. So it's a little interesting. Again, Ford of Canada is basically cutting off all of the fringe options, so to speak, because most people who get the crew cab will probably want the nicer interior features while most of the guys who get the smaller cab are probably looking to work with their truck so they might not care as much about getting a lariat at least that's what ford of canada is banking on so how does that affect pricing? Well, here in Canada, the Ranger starts just over $30,000, while down in the US, the Ranger starts at about 24 grand. Now this model I'm in here, an XLT Super Crew 4x4 with the FX4 package, this truck is gonna sell here in Canada for about $38,000, whereas the same truck south of the border in the US is probably gonna sell for somewhere between 30 and 31 grand. Now another thing about the drive here is the seating position of the Ranger and it's actually a position that I really like. You do sit sort of deep in the truck, you know the belt line is over my elbow so it feels like you're sitting down in the truck, but I also am looking sort of out the top three quarters of the windshield. So you get this kind of high seating position and sort of the higher belt line. Usually those two things don't go together, here in the Ranger they do. Okay everybody, time to do a little bit of off-roading and it is going to be pretty light off-roading today. It's just this local road which doesn't have any winter maintenance so it's gravel underneath and then some snow on top so we're here at the start of the trail we're going to first of all use our terrain mode selector we're going to go to grass gravel snow mode now that automatically puts it into four high for me and there we go so we're four high we got her in drive we can lock the rear diff but i don't really think we'll need it so i won't even do that yet and setting out. Now there are some tracks here, so some other cars or trucks have already driven through this. And as you already saw, I do have winter tires on this truck, so I don't anticipate this being a big deal. <laughs> but uh, those are famous last words, so let's see. So far, Ranger feels totally fine. Plenty of clearance. Here comes my first sort of big long hill climb. I'm gonna hit it with a bit of speed. Now these ruts are actually pretty well established and they're giving me lots of traction. <laughs> it's a bit of a rough ride here, there's no doubt about that. 
Oh, little hilltop here. Keep climbing, keep your foot into it. Nice. All right, so here we got a long downhill in the snow. So you know what, traction is no issue. So far, uh, clearance is no issue. I want to see what four low is like. So we go to, you have to shift to neutral. We'll put the truck down into four low. Perfect. Okay, so four low. Now I'm gonna go down into the S setting here on my shifter so I can control the gears. And I got her in first. So this is four low and first. My foot is off the brake now. Um, I don't know what the crawl ratio is off the top of my head, but I'll throw it up on screen. But we're about to feel what this crawl ratio, you know, really feels like. And so far, it's quite slow, actually. Nice work, Ranger. It's really calm, really sedate. Simple, really. It's getting a little deeper up here in these drifts. So I am gonna pick up a little bit of speed. I'm wheeling alone today, and I really did not wanna get stuck. So we'll just keep our speed up a little bit. There's not a lot of snow out here, but it is drifty. It's been really windy the last couple of days. So it certainly gets deeper. So I'm still in four low. I just put her back in drive so it would upshift. But you know what? It's still doing a pretty nice job of holding me back. And when you put your foot into the brakes, it really aggressively downshifts for you and keeps the revs up. All right, another little hill climb here. Up and over. Oh yeah, no problem. No problem for this Ranger. Which also has a pretty nice amount of low end torque. Um, this little turbo, you know what? It, it does come on pretty nice. So now we're going to try out the Ford Ranger's trail control system. Now, other manufacturers have systems like this, and essentially what it allows you to do is set the speed of the truck, take your foot off the accelerator and the brake, and the truck will do the rest. So let's see how it works here on the Ranger, especially here on a snowy hill. So I put her down into drive, hit the trail control button, and a menu comes up, says trail control enabled, use set button. So then you use the set button for the um, cruise control to set the speed. So let me see what speed I can set it to. Still going up, still going up. 30 kilometers an hour. I can actually set trail control to 30K, which is pretty dang quick. Um, now what we're doing here, I wanna go nice and slow. So I'm gonna turn it all the way down to five kilometers an hour. Let's make it six. Um, cause I know it's a hill. I want a little bit of momentum. So foot off the brake and here we go That was a nice smooth start All right, we're approaching the hill now. So I'm curious to see if it loses traction what it's gonna do Yeah, powers coming on a little bit Powers coming on a little bit No drama here just creeping forward now let's see, it's icy. No, look at that, it didn't even lose traction. And trail control just nicely and slowly brought me up that hill. So another thing we have to talk about are these hand-cooked Dynapros. Now you can see I actually did find a hill in this little uh, off-road trail that I have locally that was a little too much for these tires. Now if I had have hit the hill again, maybe at like full speed with a little more momentum, maybe I would have made it, but I'm by myself out here, so I'm not taking that chance. Well guys, there is the Ranger, and there's the hill that just thwarted it. I tried to get up there, it's going straight. I've already come back down and turned around, but I could not make it up that hill. It's just too long and a little too steep at the top. So we're going out that way. <laughs> it's a much shorter hill over there. Now when we got out in some of that looser, deeper snow, do you know what? They actually did a nice job out there and they grabbed real nice. It was just once they cut down to the ice, sort of at the base of that trail, yeah, they just couldn't get enough grip, especially climbing up that steep hill right near the top. So what about the interior here on the new Ranger? Well, that's sort of the funny thing is I know it's the new Ranger, but the interior is not new and it doesn't really feel like it. I can't help but jump in here and right away think, oh, 
last generation Ford. And that's because this truck, as many of you probably know, has already been sold in a number of different world markets for a couple of years now. Basically for 2019, they just brought the global version over. Now Ford did rework it, so this truck for North America is unique. It's not the exact same as the world trucks, but you know, the bones are still the same. The layout in here is still the same. So yeah, I can't help but feel like it feels a little bit old. Now, when you look at it next to its competitive set, um, it's fine. You know what? The Colorado Canyon and the Tacoma, they don't really offer really, you know, high-tech, fancy cabins either. So when you look at it that way, I think Ford has done exactly what they needed to do. However, in the coming years, um, when all of these midsizers go through a refresh, I think the one thing Ford definitely needs to address with the Ranger is this interior. And the push into luxury trucks that we've seen, especially in the half ton market, I think is gonna really start transferring down to these smaller trucks more than it already has. So you know what, I would look out for a big interior refresh when the next Ranger comes around.